hey, it's Faye. <laughs> so today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys a little bit about me. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous, but okay. Okay, um, so this video I will be answering some uh, questions from the Asian American tag that Joan tagged me. Thanks, Joan. Um, I personally wasn't really going to do it, but I wanted to do it, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it because I have such a love-hate relationship with certain things. When Joan told me, she was like, you know, I'm very curious, you know, I never really asked you about it. I think that's when it sparked me, like, maybe I should talk about it. I think it's, like, time. Oh my gosh, I make it sound so, like, dead-ass serious, but it's not. I think. I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous to do this because I'm afraid some of you guys might judge me. I've been avoiding this so, so long now, guys. You don't even understand how many questions I get. You know, like, why don't you blah, blah, blah. And I'm just kind of like, I, I see it. I do, I do. I see all those comments, but I just avoid it. And I think it's time that I finally, like, push myself to open up. Ugh, I don't know. So before I jump into that, I wanted to answer some of the questions from the tag and I screenshotted what the questions were from Joan's video. By the way, I'm going to link her video down below, so check it out. I love her, guys. I'm just going to answer some questions, not all, because I feel like this might be very long. What ethnicity are you? I am Hmong American. I know I get a lot of comments asking what my ethnicity is and I am Hmong. American. Um, which generation are you? I am a first generation. Were you always proud of your heritage or was there a time you rejected it? I think I'm going to talk about this a little bit towards the end. I don't connect well with it. What are some stereotypes you struggled with? I think honestly every Asian American or Asian person has experienced the Ching Chong thing. You're Chinese or you know typical and it's so sad to say that like oh it's so normal. You know, like it shouldn't be. I feel like Asians are a little bit more like quiet about their discrimination, at least in general, I feel like. And we're a little bit more like passive about it. We kind of just let it go. We don't make a huge deal out of it because it's a normal thing. That's why it's so easy, I feel like, to bother Asians, you know, like growing up because we're so passive about it. I know times are changing which I am really proud they are. Can you speak your language? I can fully understand it. I used to fully speak it, but ever since my mom left, we never speak it at home anymore for a couple years now. So I am starting to lose my native tongue. And it's sad because I can't really communicate with like elders, you know? So it's kind of hard for me to like express what I'm trying to say. I struggle with it so much and it like sucks, but I blame that on my mom. Just kidding. <laughs> How has being Asian American affected your relationship with your parents? I think my parents are very proud. Um, My mom is not fluent in any English at all, so growing up I've always translated. Whenever my mom needed something, I always went. My sister and I translated everything and it got so annoying to a point, you know, when you're a teenager, you're just like, oh, I don't want to do this because, you know, your friends aren't doing this. So I kind of like hated that growing up but now I look back and I'm like I'm sad almost because like wow <laughs> you know your parents they need help because they don't understand oh my god that's like another thing like I never talk about my parents because this happens <laughs> oh my gosh Joan look what you did <laughs> you know looking back now when you're an adult and you understand why they needed you to translate because they didn't understand anything and they needed to get by and think of it my parents were so strong like my mom is like the bravest woman ever she wouldn't care she will be out there doing her thing like strutting her strap mother she never cared if there were eyes staring at her but you know like they're so strong and i feel so bad i mean i wasn't always like that like you know there were times where i was like annoyed of it or not what is your favorite thing about being asian american everything we should be proud our parents came and traveled and went through so much for us to be in this country and we should be so proud that we are Asian American and we should reflect that with our actions and repay that to our parents and our families and those who helped us how do you feel about your heritage now do you identify with it and I think this is my way of going into what I wanted to talk about by the way I'll leave all the questions to the tag down below if you want to do it I know that on YouTube a lot of people ask me hey what are you Literally, what are you? <laughs> and you know, it took me a long time to finally, 
Lord finally respond to those comments and say, hey, I'm, I'm Hmong. Because I have such a love-hate relationship with it, I don't know, wait, I'm coming off wrong. I'm very afraid to be judged by other Hmong people because I know how strongly opinionated that community can be on line. Here's what I wanted to say. I have like a love-hate relationship with my culture because of, you know, the community I grew up around. Not even like grew up around. I was like literally an adult. Growing up, I had some situations that really stuck to me and then even as an adult things kept being pushed and i don't want to sound arrogant i've always kept this inside i've only like voiced this with my family but never like to an elder or like anything like i love my culture it's beautiful we've come so far and gone through so much even nowadays there's still like genocide back in you know where the Hmong people live in the mountains in thailand and everything in laos but i don't want you guys to think i'm talking about that i'm literally talking about my experience you know like i don't want you to connect that because i have so much respect on that behalf but i don't agree with certain things in our culture okay so there's this thing in our community where community our culture i don't know where if your parent okay and by the way i know some people are watching you may or may not know me you may think that this is just out of sympathy i want you to pity me no it's not if you think like that please exit i don't want to deal with that it's honestly how i feel it's not because i want you to pity me like in my community if your parent or parents had passed away or died you are immediately labeled as an orphan doesn't matter you can have your mom right there but in this community you are an orphan and that is like ta -da! that's like the immediate judgment on you and not just you but your whole family i feel like i'm making it sound a little bit more dramatic than it is and so people who haven't gone through this probably think i'm being dramatic but like it's honestly true because you're the other person on the other side just looking in it's not even that bad like get over it that kind of thing if you're the actual person in that shoe who who has to like perceive all these like judgment comments and opinions on you and your family then it's like a different story you know i'm gonna seem like the biggest crybaby it's okay though i'm good <laughs> growing up my sister and i were always like labeled as the orphans you know conversations went like this okay <sighs> oh i look crazy this is like between like i don't know women in the community oh whose daughter oh this and this daughter oh you mean the orphans those daughters oh yeah those yeah those orphans that's what i grew up with you know like that's a normal thing to me i never like really let it bother me but deep deep down it had always because of course you know i'm just this girl who like shouldn't have a voice you just kind of let it go you know that's like the kind of judgment that i grew up with so i just kind of closed that door i guess I've never felt like welcomed because of that. So that's why I say I have a love-hate relationship. Of course I love it because my parents are home, you know? I've learned to open up more. I'm working on it, but there's so much built in that's kind of hard to let go. Okay, this video is literally gonna be like 20 minutes of me just crying. Wow, I look so presentable, nice. To you guys, it might be like, oh, it's simple, just say you're Hmong. But to me, it's like, I am Hmong, but like I have so many ties with that word that it kind of like affects me. And it's silly and it's like dramatic and whatever, but you know, everyone has a different story tied to a word, a subject, a topic, whatever. Everyone has their own story. That's why I always feel like I should be careful with what I say when it comes to you know culture of course i always joke around with my friends and i don't mind at all you know talking about what Hmong is and what our culture do entail but yeah i do appreciate people wanting wanting to know more about you know the culture and i i don't mind at all you know trying to tell even though i always say i don't know either <laughs> there's like no written history and it's so hard to like keep up with all the stories i feel like another thing i don't agree with that has to do with this whole like idea of me being like very closed off in my culture when your mom gets remarried it doesn't matter what age because my mom was like one of the elders and she remarried probably like four or five years ago that was like a huge like a huge like 
a big deal because she was literally the only elder left in our family as a woman and so when she left it was like this big commotion <laughs> within like the families and outsiders it's like a very like taboo thing for your mom to get remarried for our culture it's still very like old-fashioned and traditional so it's like a something you don't do i feel like and especially since my mom was like one of the elders my mom was like 60 guys like mid 60s going on her 70s soon bomb as still rocking it elder i love my mom so much so we're in michigan and she now lives in california because her californian people came to take her her my stepdad he's such a great guy for my mom now that i've learned that <laughs> and experienced and witnessed it i do accept him but during that time when it happened i didn't if your mom remarries they are no longer your people. This is where like the very rebellious Faye comes out and say, I don't agree and I don't care. If she's married to my dad, she's a Ying. Consider Ying. She is now in the Ying family. That's our bloodline. That is our family name. If she remarries to a different guy, she has to let everything go within that family all of the you know spiritual guide <laughs> all of that like everything spiritual and everything like physical you have to let go she no longer can't like be with us so even in the physical world and the afterlife because we do believe in the afterlife say when she's older and she wants to come back and live with me my sister or like me or my family she can never do that like there's like a rule that you can't come back and have your family take care of you like that you can't i disagree i hate that i'm gonna take care of my mom when i'm older a lot older when she needs the help she's gonna live with me i refuse to care i hate that about the culture i just and my mom is like very spiritual and my mom knows she knows that I, I always say you know you're living with me when you're older i don't care what blah 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 says to the point where she just comforts me and says okay okay i know but you know i can't but okay i will that kind of thing to cheer me up same thing goes with like the afterlife because we do believe in it and if you don't i totally understand i'm not putting any judgment yet. i'm not that kind of person at all if we all pass one day my mom can never like reunite with this family like our family her family and she can only stay with that side of the family now so like she can never reunite with me or my sister or like my brothers her grandchildren my dad you know and there's just so much more that i just don't agree with and that's what just kept building this wall i mean there's nothing wrong and i'm proud to say i'm built because my parents are and i you know would do anything for my parents it feels good to kind of get that off my chest i feel like i've been hiding that or not hiding but like carrying that i don't know it just feels it feels good to just kind of let you guys know a little bit more about you know me <laughs> I know you guys always see like this goofy girl online who's just this girl who likes to express herself but everybody has a more sensitive side that they like to hide away from the camera. I feel like maybe me sharing this you guys can just come a little closer and see me in a different way. Good or bad, I don't know. I was actually really afraid that a lot of people were gonna judge me. I am comfortable to the point where I feel like I have a voice. My YouTube family, I feel like you guys will understand me and not judge me for it, but of course everyone has their own opinion about things. It's completely fine. I see it as, you know, that's just like me disagreeing with this and that. Everybody is okay. Everybody is fine. Everybody's doing great. Everyone is living life to the best they can and we're just all out here trying to survive and live our dreams, okay? Like that's all we're trying to do. So yeah, that is my Asian American tag. Not really, but in a way it is. I'm happy. I feel better. I feel lighter actually. I lost like 10 pounds. I do encourage you guys to do this tag as well and maybe even share some personal stories like this. I would love to hear because it'll be good to know i'm not alone i tag all of you guys and subscribe to this channel if you want to until next time i'm cindy